Uh, I'm a medical doctor. I'm originally from Mumbai, India, but I've been here in Knoxville for more than 25 years. Uh, I come from a, a very humble background, and uh, neither of my parents was educated. But my father and and, and you know we were pretty low on the totem pole. Uh, financially. So my father always told me, you know, if you want to make a go of life, the only uh, ticket outside the poverty is education. And he drilled that enough in my head that uh, that's what became my mantra. And uh, I stayed with it even though he passed away at a young age. Uh, and I stayed with the program and finished my medical school and then I happened to migrate to this country. And uh, did the postgraduate and then practice medicine, actually not very far from here. Um, what I would like to do is, uh, uh, before I provide the information about the scholarship, is to let you know that education is something, and you probably already know this and you hear this from your teachers and parents and what have you, but trust me, um, you know, uh, sports is wonderful and there are many other things in life that uh, as kids, uh, uh, you know, uh, you have the opportunities for, but uh, education just develops your mind. Please pardon the interruption. Noah Young and Jessica Palmer, please report to the main office. Noah Young and Jessica Palmer, please report to the main office. It, it just... Uh, prepares you for the next 60, 70, 80 years of life that's ahead of you guys. Um, um, it, the, the discipline it takes and uh, the, the perseverance and uh, those are the things that really helped me and most other people who make a go of life and uh, get uh, to the to the, uh, the final uh, to the final, to the winning line. So, um, and um, it's funny, uh, once you become interested in the education, it becomes such a big part of it. I'm practicing, I'm, I'm gonna share a story with you that's a little personal and it, it's about the Fulton High School. Um, about 10 years back, and you know, I had a serious car accident several years ago, and I've gone through several uh, surgeries and what have you, so I had to stop practicing medicine. But I couldn't stop learning and growing and educating. And since I was not born and raised in this country, so I missed out on the American history. And that was something that I always was interested in. Um, as a matter of fact, something that you uh, might not know is Gandhi, who is, you know, uh, such a huge uh, piece of history, got his inspiration to get the freedom from British by studying what the founding fathers of this country did 200 years ago. Uh, and that's where his inspiration came from. But anyway, back to the Fulton, uh, they had announced an evening class here. This is about 10 years ago. Uh, about uh, the Revolutionary War and as I said since I never studied the American history I can tell you all about Indian history but uh, so I just enrolled in and uh, I was uh, by far the oldest student because most <laughs> students were you know 18, 19, 20 um, and here I was you know 50 year old coming to the class uh, but you'll be surprised uh, at the end of the what, we had about eight weeks. It was each Thursday, if I remember correctly, in the evening. I was the only student who came on time every single Thursday for all eight weeks and uh, was asking questions and was so interested. In it. I ended up getting the most out of it. Um, and that's how I got uh, the elementary education about American history, right here at Fulton High School. So. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, what I wanted to tell you is about the power that education unlocks that we all have within us. And uh, I mean, YouTube's are great, and sports is fantastic, and James LeBron is a genius, and you know, whatever he does, and all that is fantastic, but it's still. 
I, I strongly believe that education connects your mind and your intellect in such a way that nothing else does. It teaches a person the discipline and the perseverance never to stop, you know. And you really, really don't stop uh, growing and learning, no matter how old you become. Um, and now that I have received all the benefits that this great country has provided me, um, I am now learning how to pay back. And that's where I started working on you know, all the structure that it takes to have the private foundation through which now I can do some of this charitable work. And I want to be able to touch another life, if I may, so to speak, uh, metaphorically or whatever. So that's where this whole idea came about with the project grad in Knoxville. And I am very uh, excited to be working with them. And I'm glad to see that there are students who are willing to participate in this essay writing and uh, we're going to have uh, three to five panelists uh, that will judge the essays for its performance and you know the, the whole uh, package and uh, you guys have either been provided with the rubric or will be um, and um, then the, the panelists will decide who the finalists are and ultimately who the winner is and that person will qualify to receive the funds from my foundation. Now, if somebody already uh, is going to get the scholarship anywhere, it doesn't matter because these would be on top of whatever else you guys, or whoever the person is, qualifies for. And also, I want you to know that the funds will go with you in other words, if you move from Knoxville to Chattanooga or to Timbuktu, it doesn't matter. You will still uh, qualify uh, for the scholarship. Um, I, I would uh, really like to keep this pretty simple and uh, informal and um, if there are any questions about anything, I would be more than happy to answer. I do want to mention that I have strongly been in favor of the public schools. I myself am a product of public schools and you know obviously back then my daddy couldn't afford anything so that's all I had to do. But I have two children and even though I could have financially afforded to send them to the uh, private schools, I chose to send them to public schools then, right here in Knoxville. And they are, uh, they've obviously graduated and they finished their college and now they're both working uh, and, and, and doing very well. So uh, for all the rap that the public, public schools get, I still think the public schools do a yeoman's job in providing the education. It's the individual you know, that has to decide whether he or she wants to progress in life to reach where they want to reach. And with the technology, the way it is growing, you know, all the automation taking place, it's very conceivably, it's very conceivable that a lot of the jobs that are currently being done by the people will no longer be done by the people and these robots and these machines will you know be doing most or a lot of this work and it's already shifted and i think the next 10 years will be even more so so unless you know the, the, the children and you guys have the opportunity you know at this age you can make the resolve to get yourself as well educated as you can so no matter where the technology goes I mean you will still be needed and required uh, but for that that education is so much more important than it was say at my time so I would really, really encourage every one of you, no matter whether you qualify for the scholarship or want the scholarship or 
move away and do something else, but you have got to constantly look at bettering yourself, and that is an individual decision, and, uh, and, and reading for that is so mandatory. I mean, you can get a lot of information from watching YouTubes and stuff, but it just connects with your knowledge centers in the brain differently than when you read. And if you want to use the whole package that God has given each and every one of us, you have got to use it fully. Just to give you an example, if you want to run from here to there, you wouldn't run on one foot. You could, but why would you? Why not use everything you've got? So the same token, when God's given us so much, why simply use little bits and pieces of it? And YouTube provides little bits and pieces, and that's great, and many other forums do. But sitting down and reading the books, I mean, it connects those learning centers in ways that the whole package, the whole, you're using the entirety of what you are endowed with, that you know, you've been given. Um, and in my practice, I saw a lot of children, you know, who had deficiencies and defects, and that's unfortunate. But for everyone who has it all, I would strongly encourage you to please use it for the sake of yourself and the society, because we really can use the education, uh, particularly in lieu of the fact that this country is falling down the ladder compared to many, many other countries uh, when it comes to education. So uh, that's really um, uh, very briefly all I wanted to say about the scholarship and the education. I'm not here to talk about myself, uh, but you know, I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, that anybody has. What made you decide to become a doctor? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, my daddy, who was not educated himself, uh, just knew that for the family to get out of where we was, uh, his eldest son, which was me, had to become as highly educated as possible. I had two other I had two other siblings. They did not get the same education for various reasons, and then he passed on at a young, relatively young age. But I got the benefit of his uh, uh, dictum, and uh, he thought being a doctor is the highest form of education, and. Uh, the, 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 the most noble profession. So that's the field that I got introduced to at a relatively uh, young age, and then, uh, you know, there was no stopping it. So that's how it's, my family is not like family of doctors, I just automatically <laughs> go for it. So that's an excellent question. Anyone? else has any other comments, thoughts, <coughs> questions? Who doesn't have an about the scholarship? Anybody else has it? So what's going to be your direction with this foundation? Obviously, I, I feel like it's growing, and it may be growing or may not be, but you know, as far as the future goes, you, you're reaching out to the students who obviously want to learn and who obviously want to better themselves, like you said. But where where do you see this going? I mean, do you see it? Um, that's basically my question. Where that's that's another very probing question, and I like that. You know, my foundation's charter talks about educating the young ones. Yes. Uh, and really on a global scale, I have also uh, starting, a, I'm also starting another program in India 
where the children who are underprivileged will receive the benefits of the tuition and uh, clothing and what have you uh, when they regularly go to school and perform at a certain level. Uh, that's my original uh, country, that's where I was born, uh, but this is a country that has given me what it has. So, you know, I have a responsibility here too. So we have finished all the legal and other paperwork that needs to be done to put this, uh, the entity in place. And I'm hoping the Project Grad is just the beginning of, of what is to come. Uh, it's a three-year program that I have uh, uh, agreed in principle with uh, Project Grad and <coughs> we will hopefully be able to expand on it further. But the charter of the foundation, which is where everything comes from, is education of the young children. If you have any copy left, I'll take one. Uh, Debbie is uh, <coughs> likely one of our panelists, uh, judges. Uh, so, would you like a copy, or do you? Uh, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank I assume everybody is a senior here. Mm -hmm. yes, okay. Sir. Okay. Right. Thank you. And interested in furthering your career. Okay. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Absolutely. I mean that itself is a huge commitment. A lot of students don't seem to think that they need to go any further. Now that they are finished with the school, now they can go and. I don't know, enjoy the life or what have you. <laughs> and, uh, if flipping the burgers at McDonald's is enjoying the life, uh, I, I really don't have a lot to say. <laughs> now, owning the McDonald's would be a now, That's better. a different <laughs> 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 We have a couple of who are in our entrepreneurial program that we also have. Okay. So, so future the business owners, but they're also helping to further their education. How many in here are in our top ten percent? Oh, that's fantastic! Yeah, yeah. And you know, talking about talking about the entrepreneurship, and you know, I can I can spend a lot of time uh, talking about it myself. I've, I've been a good businessman besides being a medical doctor and it all is connected. If you are going to educate yourself and build upon what you already have, the creativity, that intuitive, that sixth sense, which we all are endowed with, it just takes off and you begin to visualize and see yourself there and not just here. Um, you know, there, as I was telling the earlier group, you know, there are five stages um, from visualization to education to determination to, to all the way to transformation. So before you transform yourself from a high school graduate into a successful entrepreneur, the number one step is education. You have got to educate yourself. And you know, right now you may feel like, gosh, this history lesson, how, <laughs> long, or what, how is it going to benefit me? What happened in 1776? You know, how does it help me now? Well, trust me, it just works that way. You know, I went through medical school. My goodness, it seemed like what a waste of life. Years upon years upon years going through all this. Am I going to be using it? That's not how it works. Everything that goes in creates an environment within you that eventually leads you to where you're going to be, hopefully. So never for a minute doubt 
that. I mean, uh, as I said, you know, I mean, just 10 years ago for me to come here and sit down with 18-year-olds uh, and go to school and be the least informed about the Revolutionary War in this country, it, it, it sort of felt like, my goodness, do I want to be here? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, and don't forget, I'm a medical doctor. I mean, you know, of course, I didn't have to tell them. I don't know. Uh, but when I was finished, the teacher made a comment. He said, you were the most serious student about the class. And that's because I wasn't doing it to pass it. I simply wanted to arm myself with the knowledge of how this country came about. So I know at your age you probably think a lot of what you're being taught is what a waste of time, I can go home and watch TV and you know and stuff like that, so many things. And you know it's unfortunate that the technology has gone to a point where you guys have so much distractions. You know, uh, fortunately for me, you know, when I was your age, I didn't have any of these. So it was very easy for me to, you know, I, if I could afford a desk and a chair and a book, I was doing real well. So, but now with so many distractions, you know, no wonder that the rates of uh, uh, ADHD uh, have spiked. You know, I mean, besides, of course, uh, the medical and the excessive sugar that we use in the diet, so many distractions, constant stimulations from all these electronic devices and what have you leads the mind astray. But uh, I, all I can tell you is from my years of practicing medicine and seeing it and personal experience that what you're learning now, even though it may not feel important, it is. And most people who don't go through the education later on regret it. My brother and my sister are the examples that I have, the closest examples, close to my heart. So. Any other questions for Dr. Moran? Would you go around? I have no questions for Dr. Moran. Would you go around? I have no questions about the scholarship, about the essay, huh? <coughs> No one has any questions. So I know y'all will be coming to see me about the questions. <laughs> 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 well, let's thank Dr. Marani for coming out. <laughs>